Good evening, YouTube. Home Theater Joe here, as usual. I hope y'all are happy and healthy, doing well. Before us today, we have the much anticipated, the greatly awaited LG 65C1. That's right, it's finally here. If you've been following the channel, you know I've been dropping some hits, hints for some time now. And it's finally here in front of us. Boom. Um, I think that this display is going to give us, um, or going to give me the opportunity to talk about all kinds of things that uh, I've been seeing for a while in both the AV uh, forums and as well as the YouTube communities. And that's uh, new OLED ownership and, uh, you know, lot, lots, of, uh, lots of people taking their new OLEDs back. You know, whether it be Sony, LG, Vizio, Panasonic. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to get into this stuff. And what I'm going to do is compare this C1 to my previous experience with the 55C8 and the 77C10, which is, again, calibrated 77C10. So where are we at with this panel right now? Well, let me just tell you. I've chosen a different break-in technique uh, to my previous two OLEDs. What I will do is run SDR or HDR content through, this, through the display for no more than four hours at a time, and it must be off for at least an hour up until 200 hours should be well and broken in by then. Um, so that's how I'm choosing to break in the display. Currently, it's sitting probably about 14 hours. Um, now, let's talk about out of the box to the wall. Before we even turn the display on, what do I see? What I like to call ribbing. I see streaks from top to bottom, bottom to, however you want to say it. The full length of the screen, top to bottom, left to right. Um, maybe about a dozen or, uh, I don't know, 16, 18 of these, what I call ribs. Uh, does it concern me? No, not at all. But they're there. Moving on, we turn the display on, we get it set up, we, we uh, throw some content through it real quick just to see what, what the colors look like, black crush, digital noise, whatever. What do I see? Well, as far as color is concerned, out of the box anyway, it ranks pretty, pretty good with the C8. The C8 and this C1 out of the box, really good. The C10, trash. It was terrible. I was a little bit concerned, no doubt about it. Um, so the color's good. That's the first thing I noticed. Like, all right, color's not too far of it. It needs some tweaking, but it's pretty close. All right, Black Crush. Where are we on Black Crush? Plenty of Black Crush. Plenty of Black Crush to go around. We can hand that stuff out because this C1's got plenty of it. Does that bother me? Am I worried about it? <laughs> nope, absolutely not. Don't care. Not scared. All right, so there's also the pink tint problem that comes with the C1 or some C1s, and especially the G1. I'll get to that in a moment. Let me go back, start from, start from the ribbing. After break-in period, I have seen no ribbing in any of my OLEDs. Uh, the C10, maybe if you catch it in the right light when it's off, you might see one, one little rib or something, a part of a rib. But that's a 77 inch display. So, no, the ribs, uh, after break in, the ribs, just not even a thing. Not worried about that. Color. I'm not one bit concerned about how far off the color is or how accurate it is because, based on my experience with the C10, well, I'm going to line that up just fine through the grayscale and 100% white, All right? Full white. After that, everything should be pretty good. Um, the black, the black crush, it, it is a real problem. It is definitely noticeable. Again, upon two point grayscale calibration, I think that'll all just f fall in line. So it's important for me to remember, I have to give this panel 200 hours. All right. And I know that's difficult because, Hey, <laughs> you only have 14 days to return these things. But I mean, that's a different conversation for a different time, but I, I see these problems with the panel and I see a lot of other consumers, community, community members out here, they're, they're scared. They think they have a, de a defective panel. Well, if the community members can help me out with this, um, 
I can only speak to LG because that's all I've owned, but I'm fairly certain no matter what OLEDs you have, you're going to see these things. You're going to have these things. And that break-in time will definitely help all of these things. Will it fix them completely? No, it won't. But it will definitely help them. So that's something to keep in mind. We have to, we have to really give these guys um, a good break-in period. So I talked about the pink tint problem. This display has no pink tint. Easy enough to show you why. All right. Go over here in my service menu. Now we go to OLED. Let's go down here. Uh, if you look above normal, where well, we see WBC, MMG, PJ. WBC, old panel. This is not an Evo panel. Okay? So that's what I really expected to get. Was it Evo panel? And I didn't. Um, so that's disappointing. But... Because there's, it is not an Evo panel, there is no pink tint. So I cannot speak about the pink tint issue. And I don't know what that would look like after calibration because I haven't had an experience. So, you know, um, what do I think about this display right here? Everything I've just said, given all the facts. Well, I think every OLED, again, doesn't matter what maker. I think it, I think it goes down, boils down to potential. What's the potential of this 65C1 sitting in front of me? And to be quite honest with you, I believe the potential of this display is greater than the C1077. Just, just based on out-of-box performance, what it looks like, what the C10 looked like out-of-box compared to now, it's world's part. Totally different display. This display out-of-box looks marginally better, I would say, than the C10 out-of-box. More in line with the C8 out-of-box, as I said. So, in my mind, the potential for this panel, given all the, the issues that I just said and pointed out, the ribbing, the color, the um, uh, black crush, giving all of those things said, I think the potential of this panel is actually very high, really good. I would not take this panel back if that were my metrics or, or, or if that were, yeah, uh, if that were what I was measuring with. Or against. Um, unfortunately for me, I need that Evo panel. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, and now I have a, a couple of decisions to make with the panel, but that's another time, different story, different issue. Um, so I just wanted to share my thoughts on this panel in particular, brand new out of the box, and kind of liken that or use that as a perspective when looking at all of these OLEDs and, and the problems I'm reading and seeing, and hey, let's listen. There's definitely uniformity problems out here, definitely problems, you know, quality control is a real thing. So I'm not saying that people are wrong or they're imagining things. What I am saying is that none of these displays we buy, they're never gonna reach their full potential without calibration, period, end of story. And my message here today is because you see some certain, certain things on, um, or if you don't, you know, the display still needs break in time before we can really evaluate it. And that's any, any OLED. So I think I can wrap a little medium sized bow on this right now. And, uh, I hope that, uh, the community can give us some good feedback, especially on Sony, Vizio, Panasonic OLED panels, what their break in time, what, what it is that they do. Uh, that would be, you know, that would be greatly appreciated. Just, just helps the, uh, the data, the database grow, and then, then we get smarter. So, comments, questions, please put them to below. Good, bad, or indifferent, they are always appreciated. Now you know what time it is. As always, thank you for listening. Be good. Be safe. Boom. <laughs>